gamers root of nightmares raid starts on friday at reset watching live hanging out with me making fun of me when i wipe anyways let's get into the builds what do i suggest i'm gonna give you two builds per character and I'm gonna be really, really stingy on these weapons. I understand that people prefer different weapons, different roles, so I just wanted to get this out from the beginning. This is all a preference. I understand some different combinations are better. I'm rolling the bunk. If you haven't watched the bunk video, I don't know what to tell you. This is just nasty. Volatile, fire bolts, bunk and everything. I'm gonna roll the raid over with this build and I don't plan on taking it off. So what other build would I run? The only way I take off this solar build is that if we need DPS and I would switch to like Falling Star, Thunder Crash. There's really no reason for me to run any Strand or Void simply because I know that we have Warlocks in the fire team. We have two Titans, three Warlocks and one Hunter. Personally, I would like to have another Hunter in the fire team, but we'll get into info on that. Another reason why. So if we become short on DPS and I feel like I need to use my super, there's no way that I can put on Crabman Draw on strand and put on synthos and go beat a boss up because it's contest mode very risky not worth dying for it you might be able to get some swipes in but if the boss stops me or lands on me i'm probably gonna die so it's not worth the res token so we're probably gonna stay on solar the whole time so solar titan bonk if i need to switch to damage i'll go to thunder crash I'm going to be really quick with these loadouts. When I get to the weapons part, I'm going to pretty much go through weapons and stuff. But right now, since I'm on my Titan, I want to talk to you about what artifact mods are must have, what armor mods are must have, and then I can go fast through the other builds. Artifact mods, I don't care what build you are running. You need to have on shatter orbs and bricks from beyond. These are busted. Bricks from beyond. If you defeat a powerful combatant with a void weapon, it has a chance to drop heavy ammo for you and your teammates, huge. I've used this through Legendary Campaign. I've used this in Nightfalls. I've used it all week. Insane mod, bricks everywhere. We will not be short of heavy. Also shadow orbs. First time you break a combatant shield, you create an orb of power. Just when you thought your build couldn't create more orbs, this mod's insane. Like I'm seeing hunters create 200 orbs in one activity. Absolutely bonkers. Since I'm running my solar Titan, obviously I'm gonna run the flare up and the rain of fire bolts. I wanna explain this mod. Not a lot of people know what this mod does, and I wanted to give you a little information on it. Prismatic Transfer. 20% increase in weapon damage for 10 seconds. Does not, I repeat, does not stack with Well, Bubble, Empowering Rift, or Radiant. It does stack with Weapon Surges. So me personally, if you got Wells in your fire team, you're probably not going to be running this mod. But I just wanted to give it a little demonstration there. You never know. Void Channeling Weapon. This goes up to times four. So it's Void Channeling times four, and it's a 25% increase. It does not stack with weapon surges at all. So if you have surges on your boots, it's not going to stack at all. Me personally, I think it's not worth it. Volatile flow. Again, if you're running bricks from beyond, volatile is nasty. Void weapons. There's a lot of void weapons in today's suggested loadouts. So I'm not taking this off. Since I'm on my solar Titan, I have solar surge. Collecting a fire sprite gives me an armor charge. Make sure you're paying attention to these mods, by the way. If you're running grenades builds, select this. If you're running void mods, select this. Strand, etc. Please make sure this because a lot of people don't know if you select those mods, you can get a bit of uh, ashes three. My ashes cost one. People don't understand that. They're like, oh, I thought ashes cost three energy. Well, it's one. And then this void siphon, this void siphon can actually go down to one. Some people might have on the wrong mods. So I'm just letting you know that. So now I'm gonna mention some mods that I noticed from playing since Lightfall came out. Something you should pay attention to in your raid loadouts. This is a swap helmet. So considered in my loadout, it's not a helmet that I run. It's just something I can swap to. This is insane. So if you run a heavy ammo finder and double heavy ammo scout, I want you to read what this does. When one of your heavy ammo finder perks creates a heavy brick, it also creates a brick for your allies. Absolutely insane. Multiple copies of this mod stack, creating more ammo for your allies, each additional copy equipped. This is insane. Don't want to go into damage without any ammo. So make sure you have something like this to swap to. I will be doing this as well. Also, maybe you're going into damage and you didn't proc any armor charges or pick up any, any orbs of light and you don't have your weapon surges. If you run three of these, it's 22% damage increase and it does stack. Just treat this as a font of might. So when you're standing in a well and you're doing DPS, if you have three of these on, your arc weapons are gonna do 22%. If you take one off, 17%. If you take one off, you're at 10%. So some people might wanna get tricky 
and run something like this. So since I have on a void energy submachine gun, maybe you wanna put 10% damage stacking with volatile to destroy more enemies for ad clearing and you only want your heavy to get buffed by 17%. That's okay. I just wanted to point that out. On the class item, you can run a triple empowering finish. So this is a swap class item. So if you're just in the raid, you're like, hey guys, get ready for DPS. Oh no, you know, you forgot to set up your build. Maybe you have a setup to get armor charges. Find an enemy, put this on. As Soon as you hit a finisher, you will be guaranteed three armor charges. This will also be on my build. So if I mess up, there's gonna be orbs everywhere to proc your armor charges, but this is just an in case. Find an enemy, hit a finisher with this on, and you can actually swap off of it and you'll have your armor charges ready to go. Also, reserves. Have a reserve chest piece ready to go. I know they're bugged right now, but hey, if I can rally with double reserves and then swap to this chest piece and have something else on, that's fine. Also, speaking of swap pieces, you can do a double charged up chest piece like so as well. So you can get charged up times five, then switch chest pieces back to your resist mods and go into DPS with more than a minute of font of might, which is your, your weapon surges. Stuff like that is just easily little tips and tricks that people don't pay attention to when they're raiding please don't ignore font of might which is now your weapon surges please learn how to stack buffs and debuffs i just had to point it out so again my whole build what i'm running on my titan is already a video separated itself the bonk build is the master i don't need to go into all my mods and what i'm using and why i just wanted to show you what i was going to be running and mention those important mods if we need dps i'm going to be going to an arc chest piece falling star striker basic stuff i'm probably not going to throw on heart of it most light and swap last second only if i need to depending on the difficulty of the rate Parlocks, you're up again ignore the weapons i haven't got to the weapon section of this me personally though i just talked with chat before i recorded this video you're throwing on a warlock if you're not running starfire protocol again another video of this build on my youtube you get your well in less than 30 seconds your starfire protocol nades actually heal you all you have to do is run ashes on assets throw nades do damage in your well and your empowering rifts and you're a goddamn solar god so i came up with the decision to have a warlock never ever ever take off this build there's no reason to take off this build the whole raid now if we're in a situation where it's like a rock fight and you're like hey man we need dps for final stand you got options shade binder with the new exotic gauntlets are absolutely insane this 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 super does a lot of damage with this you just freeze you do the explosion and it deals extra damage maybe you're like clyde i'm not really feeling that okay well throw on a nova throw on something for dps now if you want to get tricky, you could always throw on the Warlock Poison build, which is also on the YouTube, for ad clear, Necrotic Grip. This super actually does more than a Nova Bomb, but it, you know, I didn't really mention Strand in this much because I want to give a quick shout out to this. This is where you use your brains. Some of these fragments were locked behind completing the day one raid. Bungie unlocked them all, knowing that we would take some of those fragments into the raid. Why would they let us take broken fragments into the raid if it's not gonna help us that much? Just wanna point that out. Me personally, I wouldn't, if I was to go on a Warlock, I'm not taking off solar the whole time. The reason why is I can spam nades and you throw on a demo rocket, you're a god. We'll get the weapons in a second after I'm done talking about the builds, but as a Warlock, you, you literally just throw on Anarchy, tag a boss, spam nades, you're not gonna die. If you die in a well, friends are gonna get on you. Easy on the Warlocks day one, but I'm just saying, if you die in a well, it's a little tough. Hunters, you're up. Remember, we're just talking about subclasses right now. We didn't get the weapons. I wanted to give the Gyre Falcon Hunter some love. This machine gun with Gyre Falcon is huge. When you use Divinity, right, you put a 15% weaken effect on the target. Also, it gives everybody a crit but the div guy really never does damage. So if you use this machine gun, it's gonna keep reapplying volatile, gonna keep reapplying weakening, which is gonna go with your chess piece. I actually used this all day yesterday. It's not bad for the Gyre Falcon build. Also, you're gonna actually be doing small DPS to a boss with machine gun damage, but still, I just wanted to give it a quick shout out. But again, I got two subclasses for you hunters. I'm gonna mention Strand though too. So if there's a lot of tormentors and you wanna throw Enemies up in the air with Threadrunner. You can throw on six Coyote. Make sure you have on Shackle Grenades. You got two grenades and you got two ways to dodge. Also, you can just suspend enemies in the air. But my two loadouts are going to be a Night Stalker because people have to understand that there's only a few ways to get 30% debuffs. Tether, this is going to last for 12 seconds if you have on Deadfall. Also, Tractor. 
but it's kind of hard to get close in on bosses in close DPS when there's contest mode activated. If you want to go for damage, if you need a DPS super, everyone knows that Blade Barrage is the highest output, the solar subclass from the Hunter, Blade Barrage. It does a little bit more damage than Threadrunner, but again, you can't go wrong. You got Star Eaters on, you're generating orbs for supers. Blade Barrage would be my way to go for that DPS. Just my opinion. Most of the time, you're probably going to be on Void. You're going to be debuffing bosses, tethering, generating orbs, playing it safe because you're going invis, but it's totally up to you. Again, I'm not going to go over all these builds because the Gyro Falcon is also on YouTube as well. So since we're on the Hunter already, I might as well mention some weapons because now we're going to go into the weapon part of this video. The Terministic Chaos, I think it's good for the Gyro Falcon. You don't have to bring it if you don't want to. Obviously, Tractor. Do not sleep on Legend of Acreus. If we can get close on bosses and proc Trench Barrel, Legend of Acreus actually does a lot of DPS. So I'm just mentioning in it, don't sleep on it. I'm gonna have it on my Hunter or I'll have it on my Vault so I can pull it over. Hopefully Dim's fine. Grand Overture is bugged right now, but I did wanna give this gun a quick shout out. It's doing some stuff it's not supposed to. So they're probably gonna mention in the TWAB. Before I start talking about all these weapons, there is a TWAB coming out on Thursday, but I wanted to get this video out so people could start grinding for builds and start thinking about what they want to use. So there could be stuff subject to change, but pretty much everything I'm mentioning right now, have this thing ready to go unless they ban it. You should have a good hothead. If not, go focus engrams. And then since I'm on my Hunter, we have the retrofit escapade with target lock fourth times. Divinity, no brainer here. And Lumina. A lot of people don't know what Lumina is, but this is the juicer DPS. People don't know that Lumina, when you shoot this at your teammates, you buff their damage and it actually overtakes the well buff. So well is 25%, Lumina is 35. That's so gonna buff people's damage even more. A lot of people use Lumina damage in low mans or speed runs. I don't know if we're gonna need it on day one, but it's definitely something to mention. If I see that we're struggling with DPS a little bit, Lumina could be the way to go. Exotics that were on my Warlock, you can't go wrong with Lament damage if we're able to sword stuff. Also Parasite, we're going through a burst DPS meta. Parasite could be good, clearing ads, getting ready for the DPS, and then unloading the one charge times 20 shot does crazy amounts of damage just something to keep in mind and keep it on the back burner i had heason's vengeance on my warlock just because of it was an auto loading last impressions but this thing can get overflow as well but most warlocks will probably be running demolitionist rockets so something like heason's vengeance bump in the night or a hothead i use null composure on my poison warlock build but hey you never know you could need a fusion for a third swapping weapon something to pull out of collections and have it sitting there osteo is something to mention for the warlock if you're going to run the poison build and you need to free some enemies this gun is slept on this is probably one of the most slept on weapons i use this weapon on my stasis warlock build but hey you can't go wrong with anyone running it if you need more ad control you need to free stuff i've done some shatter damage with volatile it's pretty disgusting when you add volatile and then you freeze the enemies and they shatter they explode so now that i'm back on my titan we're going to mention some of the big juicy weapons because this is where all my main weapons are going to stay we're going to start with kinetics weather horde everyone knows weather horde's juiced it's really good for swapping weapons or tagging enemies or maybe putting down a weather horde and then running up with a bomb camera i have a blinding ignition code a slide shot on this thing i can just slide shoot slide shoot slide shoot you can't go wrong with new content you can either run your riptide to your deliverance for me it's situational I like Deliverance because it has Demolitionist on it. And since I'm going to be spamming Firebolts every time I throw a nade, it's going to reload itself. But we know Riptide has a faster charge time, so it does shoot quicker. So it's up to you. Arbalist, everyone can get this gun now. Shahan has the quest. Arbalist is really good because it has Disruption Break, which brings me to Izanagi. We could be Izanagi swapping with Rockets or Wendigo. We don't know, but hey, this is a big bad boy right here. Make sure you got it. I chose Secession as my uh, legendary sniper because it's crafted. It had Reconstruction firing line. Totally situational what perks you have on this. Some people run Focus Fury firing line for solo play and group play. It's totally up to you. I'm bringing a slug shotgun because you never know what we're going to be swapping with. It could be Anarchy double slug. And for final stand, Outbreak. Energy weapons, the reason why I'm running Unforgiven because I... I'm sick of Funnel Web. I kind of got bored with it. If you don't have a good Unforgiven, run Funnel Web, but I run my Unforgiven because it not only takes advantage of the reload with Frenzy and I get the damage buff from Frenzy, but I also get Demolitionist perk. So I'm stacking that with Volatile to spam more nades. What if we need to play a long range? Well, I got a Vouch safe on. If there's a meta where we need to triple swap weapons, such so like this, 
I chose Cartesian to put on, but you can also put on a wave frame or a grenade launcher as well, something like Empty Vessel. Forbearance is one of the best grenade launchers wave frames in the game. Can't go wrong with bringing something like this. If you're running a solar build, Gallus Mini Tool, spreading incandescent scorched targets. If we go into that meta where we double slug with Anarchy, I chose first in last out. Zer actually just sold this, but auto loading Vorpal is definitely something you want to look at for a roll. If we need to throw on double special to get more heavy bricks, because we are in heavy ammo poverty, when I pick up a heavy brick, I also get ammo for this weapon as well. There's mentions of a Cloud Strike Wendigo meta. This thing's absolutely nuts. I actually have to finish this catalyst before Friday. It gives a triple tap, but again it is good dps swapping cloud strike after you fire a full magazine and switching to a wendigo with auto loading is absolutely not bad dps so now we're gonna go down to the heavies uh, we have wendigo obviously if you don't have one you can go uh, if you don't have a wendigo you can go to zavala and focus it also if you don't want to do that you can actually just buy the regnant out of collections over and over until you get auto loading and explosive spike as well there's a lot of copium with this weapon everyone says two-tailed fox does the most damage well from what I've seen, it's just like another chill clip rocket launcher. Someone in the fire team can use this. If one person uses it, it buffs their damage. Galley, enough said, Galahorn breaks the game. It buffs all the rockets. You never know, I might have to be on buffs. So I might have to throw on Galahorn for my team. I'm prepared for that. I'm gonna be bringing this hothead in. This is the one I'm actually gonna be using. I have impact casing field prep with explosive light. I feel like if I need an auto loading explosive light, I can pull that out of collections, but having 10 rockets with this is insane because I have field prep. And when I rally, I'll have double arc reserves on. So I will have 10 rockets. I'm ready to roll with that. Bringing the other half sword because everyone knows there's jump puzzles. So if you're not throwing on strand to uh, grapple jump puzzles, I'm just going to throw on this sword and throw on line rampants and sword fly across the jump puzzle. Anarchy, enough said, just got a 20% damage buff this season. It's going to work well for every build. Consistent damage, especially the warlocks. Sleeper, Sleeper's doing a lot of DPS as well. I've seen some videos of Sleeper absolutely melting bosses. I'll be bringing this for DPS. Xenophage, this is for people that want to work on ad clear, buff with your solar damage as well. And if someone has Div on, you can actually get a higher crit bonus now because Xenophage damage did get changed where some of it does do crit damage. I know there's going to be some tormentors. So if I don't have a machine gun on, Cataclysmic will do the job with bait and switch. Machine gun and a linear could be really good for tormentors, and that's up to you. Gamers, hopefully all this information, if you made it all the way to the end, I know I was talking a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to give you a quick loadout and uh, suggestions of what I would run on each class, which weapons, why, go over some mods. Have fun day one. Remember, it's okay if you don't finish. Not really. Tell your teammates to don't quit in the end. I'm worried about that, and I just wanted to say this. People are going to be like, hey, it's okay. We got all weekend. No, you don't. You get it done day one and you say, Clyde, thanks for showing me the guide. Me and my team smoked it. Don't forget to sub. See you next time.